Please stay tuned after this short video for a message about the future of Conan lore on the channel. Grimdark. Half off! The universe of Conan's Hyborian Age draws many an inspiration from the theories popular among occultists and others alive during the early 20th century, but put through a more realistic empiricist contextual lens. One of the key examples of this would be Robert E. Howard's interpretation of occultist Rudolf Steiner's view of the lost continent of Atlantis. While Steiner held to an idea of superpowered ancient peoples with memories so advanced they would construct alternative, modern level forms of civilization and technology, Howard held the belief that these men were merely the ancestors of Cro-Magnon Man, one of whom would be featured as the protagonist of his first story, Spear and Fang, 1925. This more savage, but still not unlike other ancient people's view of Atlantis, would be featured unsurprisingly in the stories of his first barbarian, Cull of Atlantis, whose tales take place 18,000 years before the time of Conan. Like the ancient world we know of today, as can be observed throughout all of history, the individual tribes of this continent would go through their own ups and downs in terms of advancement of culture and technology within one's means. It's important to set this initial stage of believability and partial historical realism, because if one does not, what I'm about to say could easily mischaracterize the entire Conan universe. This age of high adventure is not just home to humans, but also fantastical alien races, interdimensional world-ending threats, and magic which, as we covered in our previous video, check that out if you haven't, is much more present in the world than those casual perusers of the material would like to believe. The reasons magic and these fantastical races, which we will soon go over in this video, are not featured more often, and the reason we can still call Conan low fantasy, meaning in this context that one might live their whole life in, for instance, Samaria, without ever witnessing anything they would openly call magic or alien, are the following. 1. All non-human races either live in places humans can't or won't go for safety reasons. 2. Magic requires a high level of natural intellect and strong souls to cast, reducing the number of people who have any potential at all with it dramatically. 3. Further reducing the number of possible mages is the necessity of both tomes and teachers of the arcane, of which there are precious few who do not occupy culturally significant roles in their respective nations or tribes. This makes magic inherently esoteric in the Conan world. 4. Most non-human races, if not fully separated by an entire plane of reality, as with the Meldemanaeans, or vast space, are so endangered it would be rare to see one at all venture forth from their initial locale. 5. When one does see one outside of its native environment, it is usually for nefarious or criminal purposes in regards to humans, viewing them as eternal racial enemies, possible slaves, forced breeding stock, or food. 6. Given that these races possess either overpowered magical talent or physical abilities, it is not likely that a single non-warrior, non-mage human could bring one down. 7. On the off chance a human encounters a friendly alien being, such as in the case of Yag Kosha, that human is usually a power-hungry monster himself who will torture or kill the creature for information in pursuit of said power. The main takeaway from a lore perspective is this. While it would be possible to run a campaign using an alternate set of rules for a monster rampage game, to have a party of all serpent men or all deep ones wreak as much havoc on an island village as possible without being eventually taken out by a human hunting party, it is very unlikely to see these races working together and even less likely to have the traditional Dungeons & Dragons party setup. The Serpent Man is not here to learn about the virtues of diversity. He is here to eat your baby for dinner after watching you burn alive. That is the endless struggle that awaits every race in the Hyborian Age. Now, the reason I told you to wait until after the video for an announcement is that what you just heard, if it sounded at all disjointed or too short, is because it was originally going to be the introduction for a much longer video that script is already 35 pages long when I've only covered two out of the... 40 plus alien and non-human races that I wanted to cover. Basically, I wanted to do a video like my magic one, the complete guide to magic, except this one cannot be so easily summarized. Every single race I find myself immeasurably interested in, and while I will be doing an introductory video to each, it is hard for me not to go deeper into their lore. So far, I have a good solid chunk, and I have my serpent men done. I have 
that script fully written up in front of me. I also have the giant men, or <laughs> giant men, the giant kings written up in front of me. And I also have the beginning of my analysis of the deep ones. We're also going to be doing ghouls, gray ones, Krylandians, Migo, Shagai, Thunha, Tokotoko, Formless Spawn, Dimensional Shamblers, The Great Race of Yith, Hounds of Tindalos, Hun Hunting Horror, Night Gaunt, Elder Things, Flying Polyp, Shoggoth, Slithering Things, Soul Devourers, Bayaki, Charnel Eaters, Child of Nakai, Living Circle, Old Ones, Siren, Yagite, Black Ones, Winged Horrors and Their Ancestors, which are talked about in Michael Moorcock's series, which were more civilized, Yagkosha's Race, Vampires, Hyena Men, Werewolves, Imps, Goblins, Frost Giants, Yetis, and Mel Nibineans. That is not even the full list, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I have a lot of work cut out to me, and also I have the uh, Gods of Conan that I'm still working on as well. So I'm thinking of different ways to cover that, and that was another one that I wanted to just quickly go over. But, you see, it's not like covering the human races. The human races, part of the, the joy of Conan being this low fantasy setting, is that the human races are very easy to connect with. I would say very few of the human races require more exploration to understand them. In the case of Stygians, it would help to know that, you know, the popularization of sorcery is a relatively common thing, and that previously they were just another Mitra, and their Mitra was Ibis, worshipping country like everybody else. So Mitra is kind of like this proto-Zeus, proto-Christian figure that exists in the world. He has missionaries, he focuses on charity, living a humble life etc, etc. It would help to know that about Stygia, but you don't really have to. It's in a, a proto-Egyptian culture that accepts sorcery quite well. Hyperborea, again, it would help to know that they originated Mitra, and they were another Mitra-worshipping country that now has a the white hand rules them, and they are, you know, they're very much sorcery-friendly. However, it doesn't take that much to accept. Oh yeah, Hyperborea. All right, so they're like Vikings, but magic friendly. And then Nordheimer and uh, you know, etc., are less magic friendly, and Sumerians are less magic friendly. And that, okay, that makes sense. You know, most of these are very, very easy to get through. But again, when it comes to the gods of Conan, I have this huge list of about 62 plus gods to cover in this universe. As I said in my All Races and Cultures and Conan video, the human ones at least, uh, I, yeah, we have only seen about 10% of what this universe is capable of when it comes to religion, when it comes to the gods present in the universe. And it, it sucks. It sucks that we haven't seen anything from Zotli, which is this cool brimstone kraken fire squid since Age of Conan, the video game. You know, it sucks that, for instance, you have these great gods that actually do have a lot of narratives. For instance, I talked about in, uh, or rather I will talk about when we get to the Giant Kings aspect, or the Giant Kings video, how Ra is one of the, the characters that will be, you know, changing over time, and it will be partially, most likely, influenced by a human myth. Uh, but the truth is, there is a raw in here. There is a raw already here, and we need to look at that raw and how that raw will get rolled over into and combined with the legend and myth of some Stygian dude named Ra who probably slays a serpent man named Apep. And that's really cool. Uh, regardless, I hope to get all these out to you in the future at a reasonable time, but I have decided that from now on, I will be doing each one of these getting their own video, except for maybe Mitra and Set. I might do Mitra and Set together because they are the Chaos Comp narrative, but in Conan, and I'd really like to cover that because it would also help educate people on real mythology. At any rate, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit of actual video and then just me rambling. So have a lovely day.